All right, Jared, thank you for joining us today on the MSUM Dragons podcast. How you doing, man? Man, thanks for having me. Doing well. Glad to have you. So the reason why we have you on this uh, More Than a Game podcast is because you have a unique perspective on the life of a dragon. You were a dragon uh, student. You were a dragon athlete in men's basketball. Um, you continue to be in the basketball community here in the Fargo-Moorhead area. Um, you are our, our color commentary guy for broadcasts on live television, and you work in our admissions department as well. And so you kind of have a lot of different ways to look at being a dragon. So let's start first and foremost with uh, your time here as a student. Do you remember why you chose MSUM in the first place? Uh, interesting question. By the way, it's my birthday, so thanks for having me on my birthday. Hey! <laughs> I didn't even know that! <laughs> High five! Happy birthday! Yeah, thank you. Um, no, actually, it was, uh, you talk about networking. Um, coaches aligned. Uh, we reached out to MSUM mm -hmm. to see what was the availability for scholarship. Um, and the coaches prior knew one another. Said, hey, mm -hmm. this kid would be a great fit for your program. And... My parents came, checked out the university, like, hey, this would be a good fit. So coming in, um, just the expectations of as a player coming from Division One, I, I was like, hey, I wanted to be great. Mm -hmm. And I, I felt like, um, you know, I took some sum a summer course, really got acclimated to the campus, loved the campus. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, wow, this is it's a good fit. And from there, man, I, I just wanted to, you know, um, do what I could to make the team successful. So. And you had uh, a lot of great teammates, and as we talk about in this podcast, sports is one of those things that bonds people like like none other. When you go to battle together, uh, there's just n nothing like it to form friendships and relationships. What are some of the relationships you had uh, during your playing days that you still uh, hold dear now? Great question. Like Kyle Stallo, our starting point guard, 6'4". Yep. Uh, I used to call him a matchup nightmare because, I mean, can quick handle, uh, get mm -hmm. a smaller guard on him. We ran the four, I went in, he could post. Mm -hmm. uh, Marlon Samuel, he was my roommate. Uh, we still keep in contact to this day. Um, another guy, extremely athletic, um, was a matchup nightmare too. Jake Cruzy, you yeah. know, talk about big big shots, mm -hmm. huge steal against Bemidji State. Uh, shout out Doug Peters on that one. <laughs> We and Doug talk about that. You just yeah. made my podcast. <laughs> <Doug>. <laughs> you made me so happy. Uh, I'm sure he's fired up about that uh, one. Number love for Doug. Uh, love him here. Uh, we connected there. But, I mean, Ben Alto, you know, guys mm -hmm. that I've connect I connected with my junior year and still to this day. Uh, we don't talk every day, mm -hmm. but when we're around each other, uh, it's love. It's dragon love, so I appreciate that, yeah. Yeah, man. And now you get to sit courtside uh, during our home contests and provide us a little color commentary as someone who's gone through that and has experienced those moments yourself and to help our audience at home kind of understand the things that are happening in there from your perspective. So what's it like to, to be in that broadcast role now and uh, seeing people go through what you went through? Man, first off, thank you for the opportunity, John. Hey, man. I mean, I, a dream come true. I love it. I mean, Good. to Glad. actually, you know, talk about... This isn't uh, a performance review. We're, we're just... I like get <laughs> 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 well, seriously, like, to talk about, from that perspective, to, to uh, put words to what's going on, mm -hmm. uh, I love it. You know, we have a had a fun uh, last week, had a fun weekend, yeah. uh, big wins for both the men and women, yeah. uh, to see um, not only just the, the student-athletes excel but to see the students to get excited. Uh, you got the pep band there, the atmosphere that's mm -hmm. built around. Um, What's that like compared to what, what you experienced? I mean, we had some big games now. I yeah, mean, when I'm, you not, and I'm not. <laughs> you guys were good. You guys were a show. You guys were worth watching. Um, so, I mean, that's, it, it's fun when you can kind of draw some of the comparisons. You know, I know in my day, when I was playing, right. um, there wasn't a lot of people in the stands because we weren't very good, um, and I can't can't blame you for that. But it's it's definitely turned a, a big corner here with the success of both the men and women for for a while. But I mean, you were one of those teams that kind of had that support as well back then too. So what's it like to kind of see, you know, Dragon basketball back to where you remember? That's a great question. When you talk about energy in the building, I'm mm -hmm. sure from a player standpoint, when you come in. He like said the band's going, the crowd's into it. Uh, I remember I was talking with Steve about this at UND 
when they we came in undefeated, they came in undefeated. Mm -hmm. They had a guy that drafted second round, uh, Jerome Beasley, second mm -hmm. round NBA by the Miami Heat. He was pretty uh, good. Yeah. Myron Allen um, came in initially, was a McDonald's All-American. Mm -hmm. um, so clash of the Titans, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And um, we were victorious. However, I mean, just the build up around that game. Mm -hmm. So to see the young uh, student athletes now to, you know, have a Mankato State coming here where you know it, it's going to be a dogfight. You're not mm -hmm. going to just roll over, you no. know, to have those type of teams come in. Um, it's pretty cool to see. It is. It's fun to watch those kids excel. And I'm um, uh, running to uh, Tim Bergstrice in the hall and, hey, good luck this weekend, Coach. Mm -hmm. Keep it going. And he's excited, uh, saying they got some, you know, some consistency mm -hmm. from their players, and they're excited. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it was a fun weekend. A lot of a lot of exciting moments. The women's games were a little too exciting. <laughs> <laughs> too exciting for me. Um, so now you also developed a little bit more of a relationship with MSU. I mean, your recent work in the admissions department. And, uh, you know, what's it like to now be in the office promoting the same program and, deg and degrees and, and school that you attended when you were here? Easy promotion. Easy, I, mean, I bet. Yeah, yeah, easy. Yeah. For me, because um, I was already... Uh, he was an advocate of higher education. Mm -hmm. I was already promoting, hey, I'm alumni at MSUM. So now to be, you know, going to my territory is southeast Minnesota mm -hmm. and southern Wisconsin. So to go to college fairs and talk about the different programs that we have, uh, the opportunities uh, is awesome. You know, meeting with parents mm -hmm. and saying, hey, we're the third for the third straight year, we're the safest college campus in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Like that's a huge selling point for a parent to put them at ease. Uh, to talk about the various programs, um, the networking opportunities here in the Fargo-Moorhead area with Shields, Microsoft, uh, RDO. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is an awesome place to come uh, get your college education, network, uh, and graduate. So, yeah. Yeah, and you got some uh, some dates coming up, right? We got Admitted Student Day. Oh, yeah. February 22nd. So what what happens at Admitted Student Day? What's, what's going on there? Shout outs to the admissions team. Yeah, um, well... <laughs> We're biased. <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> yeah. But uh, admitted students there, this is where they come in, uh, get an opportunity to meet with their professor, kind of figure out, hey, is this the school that I want to say, hey, I want to spend the next four years, mm -hmm. uh, get my degree from, uh, you'll get a chance to get a campus tour, obviously eating Keezy Commons. I'm sure mm -hmm. you had an opportunity to eat there at one point. Yeah, I still eat there. I go, <laughs> I go get my chicken tortilla soup and oh, man. those dragon cookies, man, those sugar cookies, when they got those going on. And th we went there for Thanksgiving and it was real good. They got a nice spread. They got the carved turkey and the mashed potato. I mean, everything was great. See. And I can't even, I don't partake in that anymore, plant-based eating habits. I mean, I talk about it on air, but just good food. Yeah, you guys talk about some weird stuff. We do. <laughs> Spe speaking of interesting relationships, you you and Steve have created quite a, I, I don't know, a dynamic. Uh, that. You know, what's what's that like to sit next to, you know, a guy who's been doing this for 23 years for us? And how have, your, how have you guys worked together uh, over the last few? It's amazing. Um, to work with Steve, great guy. Mm -hmm. I've known him, like you mentioned, he's from a student athlete, so approaching a date myself mm -hmm. many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I view him as a big brother, you know, just sit and talk sports. Uh, he knows his stuff. He's always mm -hmm. prepared, uh, high energy. Uh, he's intense in moments, uh, but at the same time, you know, um, he's respectful and, and uh, fun to work with. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, you know, I'm excited that you give me the opportunity and to have somewhat of a mentor mm. to say, hey, I know you, you want to say this or do this, but try it this way. And so um, it's been fun. It's been a cool run. Yeah, it's been it's been a really good, uh, interesting thing to see you, you, <laughs> you two and the topics you get into, as you mentioned. Y you guys go off on some weird stuff. We do. And it's okay. I think, um, you know, in broadcasting, there is always those moments where you kind of got to show that this is more than just what's happening out on the court and there's there's real people and real relationships and uh, your guys' honesty can be fun. So what are some of the, the oddest conversations you can remember from, I mean, even this year? Oh, uh, man, that's a, put me on the spot. I'm trying to think. There's a lot, I'm sure, that are coming uh, to your head right <laughs> now. <laughs> I mean, from what type of socks he has on that day or... Um, mm -hmm. You know, I love when he can just rattle off a stat that mm -hmm. from 
yeah, the crazy. 90s. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or rattle off a stat from when I played, or rattle off a stat from uh, the the um, Elite Eight team. Just mm-hmm. rattle it off, and like he just was talking about it mm-hmm. while we we're watching the game, and it's just mm-hmm. like, man, whoa, that was yeah. that's impressive to me. Um, like you said, we get off on some some tangents, some weird <laughs> stuff, but hopefully it's entertaining. Uh, you know, obviously. It's fun. Yeah, er- everyone that I've that I've bumped into on the road and uh, that are fans have have enjoyed it, and uh, think that you guys are hysterical. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, he was our guest on the podcast last week. Okay. And you know, he talked about uh, that Bemidji game is one of his fondest memories. Wow. Um, you know, when we, so I asked him that same kind of question of you know what moments stood out to you of twenty three years of observation that stand out is that we're just there's something more there than just a win or a loss. And he specifically remembered you and um, you coming up to him after that game and giving him a big hug and it just felt like something different and something special. How'd that feel for for you? Thinking back on that, man, you talk about a divine appointment, if you will, uh, running into Steve. Uh, Obviously taking bus trips, you know, he travels with us, so... Uh, Did you ever play cards with him on the bus? I can't say I have. I heard about that. Yeah, man, we played. We played some. I mean, we played a lot because I was assistant for a while. We played okay. tons of games of hearts up from front. Um, I was never very good, so they always invited me to play. Um, but yeah, I mean, go on. Sorry, to <laughs> no, no, no. That's good stuff. But to again, senior year, uh, final game, mm-hmm. um, had all the old hopes and aspirations of bringing you know, a banner back to MSU and getting the yeah. championship and losing the championship game. And who do I run into in the hallway? Steve. And mm-hmm. so um, just a great embrace. Mm-hmm. Um, and we still share that moment. Like, yeah. I, you know, he, you know, showed mad love, like just embraced me like mm-hmm. a big brother would in yeah. a moment where he felt, you know, uh, a little brother needed uh, some love. Yeah. So he hugged me and say you know great game and um it's gonna be all right i was in tears you know oh sure so, yeah um, no and rightfully so yeah. I mean, you work so hard and you have those dreams and you have that romanticized feeling of what it's going to be like to stand on that ladder and cut down yes. the net and ho- hold a trophy <laughs> and then it just doesn't happen and you have to wrestle with reality in a very short amount of time in front of a lot of people mm. That is not an easy thing right. to do, and we have to do it, and we broadcast those moments. And sometimes, it's like last weekend, where Brooklyn shot goes in after the Kawhi bounces. <laughs> right. and it goes, right. goes through the hoop, and we're fist pumping and tackling each other on the floor. And then you have moments where Crookston hits a game winner in front of your home crowd and is celebrating on your floor. And, you know, it's just the game. Right, and uh, it, it you know we try to keep it more than a game, but th- that what's that's what makes it more than a game is those moments where you learn what it's like to win in those moments, those moments that you'll never forget, and those those moments that you you heartbreakingly lose, which you will also never, never forget. Right. And now we get to come full circle with with you and Steve at the games, and it's just a pleasure to watch uh, you guys work and have fun. Um, I, I honestly think you two have more fun <laughs> than, than anybody uh, doing the games today. And there's not a lot of two people crews out there for, you know, the in-house productions. I mean, Midco comes in, does a great job with their crews, and and they'll be doing the NSIC tournament down in uh, Sioux Falls. Uh, but you know, to have a two-person crew for us um, is important. Uh, you know, we got to balance Steve out a little bit, <laughs> so that's why we bring bring you in to do do the work. And uh, you guys just seem to have such a good time. It just looks like you're having fun there each and every game, no matter what the score. So we appreciate you giving us that perspective. We appreciate you, you know, and all the work you're doing in admissions. Uh, we appreciate you as a, as an alum and a, a proud representative of what we do and what we stand for. And thank you for joining us on the MSUM Dragons podcast, man. Absolutely, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Adam.